turn yes. off your mic and I turn on mine when you're on the chat. Okay. Actually, we have we are only five. Okay. So your mic is on. Yes, the mic was speaker. speaker. So who speaker is on? Mine is on. Oh, you're on. Yeah. So am I uh, on air? Yes. Yes. Well, uh, welcome. Welcome to uh, the SG Gallery weekend. We have a major event with. Uh, I see 103,000 people uh, attending us uh, internationally, though not everybody is connected just yet. Uh, but anyway, thank you for the people who are already connected. Uh, we will be recording the event so that uh, the more members of the public can enjoy the, the call uh, later. I think it's not quite 4 p.m. in Singapore. Yes, so um, we will be officially starting in one minute. Meantime, uh, hello to those who have connected. Thank you, Melvin, uh, as our new uh, <laughs> cameraman, as we say in French. Thank you, Chen Stan, for representing uh, the international collective public. <laughs> <laughs> international? <laughs> yes, because we have a you know, the call we broadcast in France, we are really good at it. All right, so I think it is now. 9 a.m. in Paris, France. It yes. is uh, therefore also 8 a.m. in London. It is uh, 10 a.m. in uh, Tel Aviv. It is uh, 4 p.m. here in Singapore. Uh, Guillaume, before we start, uh, yes. Alessandra is inside. Uh, let's ask her if she can hear us. Yeah. Hello, Alessandra, can hear us? No problem. Okay, great. Fantastic. Well, Alexandra, I'm very happy to have you with us. I know that you are. Uh, a fan of uh, the gallery, and you are a fan of Jimmy Tan and Jimmy Teo. And before the end of the call, you will be a fan of Olivier Guina. Yeah, the it's a great activity. pleasure for me to uh, welcome Olivier Guina as a speaker and, in fact, as the main presenter today. It's also a great honor. Uh, Olivier is the chairman of the Comité Français de la Couleur, which translates uh, exactly uh, as uh, French Committee for Color. Olivier is also the Secretary General of Intercolor, uh, which is an international organization dealing with color. Uh, Olivier will explain to us later exactly what is Intercolor, what is the Comité Français de Couleur. Olivier is a friend uh, of more than uh, 30 years. He and his uh, life partner, uh, Olivier Guillemin, uh, are very dear friends. So it's Olivier and Olivier. And it's Olivier and Olivier going to meet Jenny and Jenny. So uh, together with me in the room for the talk are Jenny Teo and Jenny Tan, who uh, uh, well, let me uh, show, 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 show that here. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, uh, on the walls, of course, is the aspects of their, of their exhibition. I actually first met uh, Olivier Vidrine. Japan when I was a young banker, and that's why in honor of uh, living at Lumina's partner, Olivier Vedry, I'm now sitting or standing, I mean, it's, uh, you can decide what to call it, on what was called the banker's chair in my uh, land when I was a young banker. Olivier had designed this chair as part of a collection of uh, furniture 
for sure at the major plan, which uh, is a leading uh, uh, design uh, shop in, in Tokyo, very distinguished uh, uh, history in the French uh, design. So, uh, we just actually saw the chair, so it has a patina that's been acquired over 35 years, moving between uh, Tokyo, Hong Kong, Paris, Singapore. And then we just restored for the leather part. It's uh, it's uh, so in terms of color. It's it's a du cuir d'agneau doré. It's lamb leather and gold. I don't know what you would think of the co this color gold. Uh, I don't know whether gold is part of the menu for our presentation today. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm here to welcome Olivier from Olivier's uh, chair. So uh, without uh, more. Uh, Introduction, uh, Olivier Guimel, thank you. You have prepared a wonderful introduction uh, about color, about what you do, and about your views on offline color, the uh, title of the exhibition. Now, the talk this event, which will last an hour, and uh, which we are recording for posterity, uh, the title is Online Color versus Offline Color. Uh, nice. Online Color, well, if you're looking at the exhibition on the screen, whether it's the catalog or this uh, video link. Uh, obviously, you see uh, online colors, which is the best we can offer you uh, if you're far from Singapore. Uh, however, what JD Tan and JD Taylor uh, have intended is for us to see the colors for real. That's why the exhibition is called Offline Color, uh, as in see those colors for real. So um, I hope that all of you watching us from uh, France or from anywhere else, you know, us in the world can uh, when they see the, the real thing. And uh, one question we'll have later for Jimmy and Jimmy uh, is uh, well, what's the difference between what people can see on the screen and what they can see here in the gallery? Now, Olivier, uh, I will mute myself and uh, ask you to uh, proceed with your presentation. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Guillaume. Thank you, Guillaume. So it's a, it's a pleasure for me to participate uh, uh, to that uh, online offline event uh, to talk about the colors and also because uh, I remark the work of uh, Jimmy, 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 and uh, I find it was very interesting and very uh, uh, something very uh, positive. And uh, we need actually a positive message. And I think that the color help us to have that type of uh, positive message. Uh -huh. Also one of the subjects actually, because uh, with the pandemic, uh, with the pandemic, we have, we have to work uh, a lot with uh, Zoom. So in, uh, in uh, digital, <laughs> so the thing is uh, actually the problem when we work on the color, uh, mm -hmm is the materiality of the color and the non-materiality of the color to, to, to think, to find a, a way to, to join the, the, two, the, two, the two concepts. So I will, I will show you a, a presentation um, which, uh, comment, um, I, don't, I ask you two seconds to open the file. So to explain, uh, to explain uh, my, my work, what is, uh, uh, what is the Comité Français de la Couleur, shortly, of course, what is uh, uh, Intercolor, and also uh, uh, the, the view, uh, my view of the work of uh, uh, Jamie Tan and Jamie Théo uh, through the colors. So let's go to share the screen. Voilà, partager l'écran. Euh, mise en forme, affichage. Sorry, it's always. Euh, comment je fais? Voilà. Good. So, uh, online color versus uh, offline color. So, uh, it's, uh, it's true for me, the color, since I, I am the chairman of the French Committee of the Color since uh, 1992. 
And the color is a catalyst in my experimental approach to stand and society. I explore color like a fourth dimension, and it is an essential part of the way I imagine space and things to come. Uh, it's always uh, color, it's, uh, it's uh, very important to imagine the things to come. So the Comité Français de la Couleur, uh, it's an association which exists uh, uh, since uh, 1959. Uh, so uh, the concept is to observe, to, to have a better creation. Color is a matter of light and sensation. Color is inner experience and multi-perception, multidisciplinary and multi-sensorial. The Comité Français de la Couleur research explore all fields to set vibrating the tonality that reveals sensitive area of the harmony that around, arose the senses. So it's a very large uh, common, um, uh, description. Uh, the Comité Français de la Couleur uh, have uh, almost uh, 60 members actually from different, uh, uh, from fashion, but also from design, cosmetic, and also uh, uh, research, writers. And uh, we work together, uh, we organize events. Uh, and we make a color uh, meeting. It is not a, a picture of uh, Comité Français de la Couleur, it's a picture of intercolor meeting a few years before. We organize events. We try to create a link between different uh, fields of color. For instance, uh, it was uh, uh, mixed, uh, uh, a link between uh, the jewels and the food. And uh, of course, with a lecture, but also with uh, degustation. Degustation. This was, uh, of course, the colors came from the light. So we do something with Inchart, which is the capital uh, of the light. Uh, also, we think that uh, uh, the, the, the future of the color can come back from the past uh, between uh, patrimoine and innovation. So uh, we worked a few times with uh, the manufacture de Sèvres in, uh, in Sèvres, in close to Paris, because they, they, they use, you, everybody knows the famous bleu de Sèvres, but they have a very uh, perfect laboratory and they are between the past and the future. This was uh, something more abstract. It was uh, something uh, about uh, the, the fire uh, we do an event uh, around the fire. And uh, also the multi-polysensorial approach. Uh, we, did that, we did it a few times. And uh, this one was uh, with the food and the cosmetic. And sometimes we work uh, like for the intercolor uh, uh, Marseille, uh, two years before, we, we work on more uh, um, um, professional subject. It was a, a meeting between the colors of the sport, uh, the, the, the evolution of the color of the sport, the sport now is something, it's, it's becoming something so important. Close to the cosmetic, it was uh, iconic beauty color. So we choose the three color, the pink, the red, and the black to do an exhibition in a fair uh, makeup in Paris, which is member of the Comité Français de la Couleur in partnership with Zorowski, Schiaparelli, uh, etc. Okra. For instance, this is just an example of one of, of, of our color cards, uh, two years, two Two, twice each year, uh, as do also in their color, we do uh, a color cast. So it was uh, for fall winter 2001, 2022, 2021, 2022. So it has been done uh, uh, more uh, in um, 2019 because we work a lot in advance to uh, make the color proposal. And uh, we choose three uh, color uh, groups. It was in question of values, uh, primal uh, values, values, instinct values, uh, experimental values, and uh, uh, absolute values. 
So intercolor, uh, shortly I will also introduce uh, intercolor. Uh, the, the, our meeting was uh, just uh, by Zoom, but also with real color cards the two last day. And uh, intercolor have been funded in 1963. And uh, actually there is 70, uh, 17 countries. Uh, Voila, you have the text, Intercolor provides a platform for those concerned with color trends to share and celebrate the diversity of color influence across the globe. It is a unique opportunity to work together to create an international color card. Uh, so Intercolor is, uh, uh, the member of Intercolor are uh, uh, association, university, uh, professional group. Uh, there is one, Represented for each country. Uh, the France is uh, since the uh, beginning uh, of Intercolor uh, represented by the Comité Français de la Couleur. So you have a view of the member of Intercolor and uh, you can see, of course, uh, we don't have all the country, uh, but uh, quite many countries. So we have a representation in uh, North America, of course, uh, in Europe, uh, in Asia, and um, a lot of, of country in Asia. It is a picture of the members from yesterday. Uh, I know that some members of Intercolor are, are here to assist to the to the to my presentation. So I do a presentation. So you can see the the difference, and uh, it's a very sympathetic. Also, it's uh, always a Pleasure to exchange. Voilà. We during the meeting, we when we have a real meeting, everybody put the colors on the table, and after we make a group, uh, and we try to to find uh, uh, to do a synthesis of the, the the presentation of the 17 country. We do that in a, quite a short time, so it's a very interesting and. Uh, very emotional, but also we are all very professional. So we always uh, uh, do a very interesting work, and which is very interesting also is uh, to see that uh, uh, all over the world you can find the same uh, the same feeling. Of course, uh, the culture are different, uh, the social or political situation is different. But uh, you can always find some link uh, between East and West, North and South country. Oh, it's very really important. Can I ask what is a color card? A color card is uh, what I showed you before. See, this is a color range. So uh, it's something that uh, uh, you will use and you will propose to. Uh, uh, to, to, it's a synthèse, uh, uh, c'est une, une gamme de couleurs de tendance, it's a trends uh, color range. You understand? Yes, um, absolutely, thank you. So, no problem. Okay. So, maybe later we can also... ask Jimmy and Jimmy whether do they use a color card when, uh, before painting? Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, thanks, 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 Olivier. So, sorry, back, back to you. No, no, but we can discuss. Of if you have questions, perhaps it would be easier to, de to do that because I know we have a short time, so I, I try to be uh, not too long. So just uh, briefly, I want to introduce OO, which is uh, the, the company I create with uh, uh, Olivier Vedrine uh, in 2000, almost 20 years ago. And uh, we work in different uh, fields, uh, fashion, design, architecture, beauty, uh, a lot of scenography. Uh, and uh, of course, a lot in the culture and the luxury. Uh, so you have some, some, very shortly, you can visit our website. But uh, uh, of course, the colors is uh, always uh, always very present in the in the common in our work. I have to mention that uh, 
uh, I began to work in fashion as fashion designer and creator. I was also uh, artistic director for uh, uh, Paco Rabanne during a few years. And I became, uh, I come to the color after my uh, uh, creative uh, uh, work because the color was uh, very present in my uh, creative uh, work. And I work also a lot in the cosmetic because uh, the color is very important. And uh, I was uh, uh, artistic director for Shishé Do during uh, 20 years. Uh, from, uh, uh, I have to stop with the pandemic this year, but uh, I work since uh, uh, 1999. So, talk, I would like to talk about the, what, what, what give the inspiration, uh, what give me, what, what inspiration I feel from uh, the work of uh, Jamie and Jamie. So uh, uh, for me, there is a free uh, common uh, uh, approach of the color. The first one, of course, is a story, uh, it's a graphic approach. So I, I try to find some, uh, um, I don't want to say that they, are, well, they were inspired, but for me, uh, some, this work, for me, evoked me some, some other artists, uh, the work, especially the work of Jamie Tan. Of course, the work of uh, Carlos Cruz Diaz. But also you can find a graphic approach in the fashion. This is uh, all things, but uh, I choose because to, to I choose a vintage uh, uh, picture because I think it's always interesting to see that uh, uh, you can keep the, 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 the same, you can have the same influence in the past also. Of course, in the cosmetic, uh, the graphic is very used in the, in the cosmetic since a few years. And also these artists, are, it was interesting because I prepared the, uh, the, 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 this uh, presentation early, uh, uh, this early in the beginning of that week, last weekend. And uh, uh, to, to talk to you about the international collection, uh, this work was used for, by the Turkish uh, member of Intercolor in his presentation uh, uh, yesterday or before yesterday. So uh, when I say that uh, there is a, a link, it's a, uh, it's a real, it's a reality. And uh, which is interesting, uh, it's also uh, the idea of uh, three dimension and the moving uh, graphic line. Perhaps I can stop because, um, voilà. Ah, it's super, so, super cool. Huh? It's super cool. And uh, just also to, to mention, uh, I talk about the Turkish, but uh, uh, the, the Thailand also, uh, Soutini uh, from uh, INFAS, from the Thailand Association, uh, use, uh, illustrate one of the, his uh, color theme, 
uh, with the work of uh, Jamie and Jamie. So I, I was uh, very, uh, very pleased uh, to see uh, it's another ex example of link when there is something in the, in the air, you can find it uh, all over the world. So the work of uh, Jamie too, we are, we are more in the degradé. So uh, uh, I find some other uh, uh, example of artists. Yeah. Uh, 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 Olivier, uh, Olivier oui. I should add that uh, dégradé en français, c'est pas gradation. la même chose que degradé en anglais. It's a ah, it's gradation, a color gradation. Yes. Ah yes. oui, c'est vrai. That's not what you meant. Yes, 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 yes. I, I miss, I, I, I know, I mean, gradation is not dégradé. I will do the correction, sorry. The degradé. Degradé is not positive. The language of false friend. Yes. You know, it's gradation, color gradation. I, I, mean, I miss the, I work with Noemi on the, on the presentation and I miss the, um, I, I miss the, the mistake. Uh, also, which is also interesting. So here is interesting because it's uh, with the transparency, the gradation with transparency. This is uh, uh, gradation with the body, with the work of uh, Alan Jones. And it's, it's interesting because uh, uh, it's also a three dimension uh, uh, gradation. And uh, also the gradation in fashion, uh, <coughs> for instance, is at the left, and uh, I didn't uh, find the, <coughs> the author of uh, the, the quotes with very uh, futuristic gradation on the, on, the, on the right side. Also, the gradation in the cosmetic is very important for the lips, for the, for the eyes. This is a, a picture of uh, Serge Lutin. It is a very famous... Uh, uh, model uh, Sayoko uh, of the 70s, 80s. And uh, we use also the concept of gradation in our personal work. So it was an exhibition, an event, fashion ex exhibition and fashion and design exhibition that we do in Carousel du Louvre. So it's not recent, huh? it's, uh, it was made in 1996. And uh, it was the gradation of the color of the rainbow from the, uh, with uh, clothes, but also with the uh, caban, uh, the, the rainbow caban. So from red, orange, yellow, green, blue. So all the gradation of the rainbow, which is very interesting. And this is uh, very interesting. It's a RGB uh, color space atlas, uh, designed by Toba Oberbach. Ob and uh, uh, I found it was also very uh, in the in the following of the rainbow spirit. It was very interesting to have the book of uh, gradation. After also we find in the work of the artists the concept of the color block uh, with the use of the color of the material. So of course we have a very famous artist who work on that concept. The one of the more famous French artists who work, uh, work on the black, Pierre Soulage, Marc Rotko, who work uh, uh, mainly on the reds, on the reds. So it was not always color block, uh, but main color blood, of course. Uh, on the left, it's an anima animation. And uh, of course, Yves Klein with uh, his famous Bleu Klein. Also, we work with. Olivier and the mono, monoblock color concept. Uh, in 95, it was at Galerie Neotu, the red experience. Uh, memory card. Data and uh, uh, more recently, it was the blue experience in Sèvres. Voilà. So this is the introduction. So uh, now, uh, I would like to, to, to talk, to exchange perhaps with, uh, uh, I, I made a, a selection of painting uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Jamie and Jamie. And uh, it was interesting also to, to see how they work. Uh, 
I will use my uh, and uh, I choose this first mm -hmm. one uh, because, because uh, the gradation of the colors give me the spirit of uh, of space and uh, which is in interesting between the, the, the greenish and the bluish we have the impression of uh, um, to be in a pesantor, uh, uh not in uh, uh, something quite in, in real this is uh, my feeling and uh, uh, that that yellow uh, to go uh, which go to the to a gray uh, for me it give uh, uh, a uh, feeling, an impression of uh, of uh, mystery, of uh, deepness. This story of uh, blue, which go of uh, uh, which go to the something more green. Uh, uh, it's for me like uh, it's an um, abstract uh, vision of the work of uh, Jan Dillenster with this. Uh, uh, flower since greens uh, uh, lives in the water. This is uh, for me a story of first green sun and uh, very, uh, very, very interesting and uh, like uh, uh, it's very soft, but it gives also the uh, the story of a very uh, 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 strong uh, light. And this harmony also was very interesting, and it's totally in the colors that uh, uh, we see uh, uh, in many countries uh, during uh, our uh, last meeting in uh, Intercolor, uh, the two last day. This work for me is something more fresh, and uh, you can see the, we can link it to fashion. Uh, with uh, the, this uh, dress of Americana Manasset of the last uh, presentation in New York. And uh, this one, it uh, can be a very uh, aggressive and 80s uh, cosmetic uh, approach of uh, the color. And here we are more in the volume, in the architecture. And uh, for me, uh, uh, that work evokes uh, uh, a volume, a deepness also, and uh, uh, different uh, position of, uh, we have the impression that the center uh, uh, of the painting is uh, in a uh, relief in 3D. And uh, uh, I think it was, uh, for me, it gave me um, the inspiration of the, work of Marcus Linenbrick. And here we are more in a, 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 a minimalist uh, approach of the color. And uh, it's evoked me the, the work of uh, uh, the architect and designer, uh, Georges Rousse. So thank you. It was a, a, a very personal view of the work of uh, the two designers. I will uh, arrête, share my partage and go back to the full screen. Olivier, thank you very much. Uh, so let me now introduce formally uh, Jimmy Theo and uh, Jimmy Tan, the, the two artists. Olivier, thank you so much for sharing. Maybe uh, Jimmy and Jimmy, if you could introduce yourselves uh, briefly. Uh, and then, uh, oh, you want to do it in front of the uh, painting? Yes, yes, sure. Uh, so maybe Jamie, uh, yes. Or oh, you want to introduce yourselves separately first and then together? Okay, all right, so let me, yes, all right. So, so, um, First, you know, I, I, um, I did not introduce myself for people who don't know me. Um, I am uh, Guillaume Neville Lambert, the co-founder of uh, Art Porter's Gallery. And it's uh, really a fantastic uh, pleasure and uh, honor, and colorful pleasure and honor to have uh, Jamie Tan and Jimmy Tio's work in the, in the gallery for this exhibition, Offline Color. So uh, 
it's easy. It's like Olivier and Olivier. It's Jimmy and Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy Theo, Miss Jimmy Theo, and Mr. Jimmy Tan. Um, so normally I introduce them in front of their respective works and make a distinction. But today you choose to be introduced together in front of the one work you did together. So. So we kind of like much more of practice together from two different kind of styles and we're trying to make it happen within color. So for, I think for this piece, we were really thinking like what is a collaboration piece because this is the first time that we work together and although our styles seem uh, kind of different between each other, but I feel that it's this difference that brings out the best in each other. So which is why we created this work. And yeah, as you can see, like, we did the middle areas and we start the one that's kind of containing the two. And we're thinking like, how are we going to blend both of our books together? And I felt that the, the, the surrounding area was the part. When, so when we look at the bottom area, right, it kind of looks like a work. But as they are just kind of blend all together, they kind of surrounds it as a whole. So we can say that uh, color in itself kind of reach, reach across one another. And it kind of merges together as a whole in the composition. Yeah. So perhaps you can say that's one of the powerful things about color that it doesn't separate things, but it comes together and you know just combine this entire thing. Yeah. So this piece is called Offline Color, which is the main uh, title of the show. And I think for this show, we were trying to find something like the difference between online color and offline color. So colors that we see on the screen all the time and the difference between like physical colors, the colors that we paint, and you come and experience that and also you kind of be one with the world. Yes, and for me online and offline color, not, there's no one, one of which that is important, I think both is important, but um, for us trained as hater, we are more, I would say with the influx of online um, color, we get a bit desensitized about offline color. So for us, it's a totally a new experience when we start to talk about offline color. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I, I got a message that there was a lot of echo. Um, uh, Olivier, how is it for you, the sound? The sound is okay for me. There is a, no, there is a little echo in the in the in the gallery, but it's fine. You can understand. We can understand you very well. Okay. Okay. Th th thank you. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry about the uh, the, the echo. So, uh, Jimmy and Jamie. So the exhibition is uh, offline color. But for example, Olivier in Paris, he fell in love with your work, but he only saw it on the screen online. So how does that make you feel? I think that it's not one that is better than another. It's more that like to kind of uh, bring the focus as like they are both equal parts and they both have different, um, you know, good and bad things about it. Yeah, yeah I, I remember there's a collector who came to see the smaller works and I think uh, there was an image of it where she saw the color was not too, not very bright. So basically it's just an online version of the painting. So when she come by and she thought about how vibrant a painting is compared to the one on, online, so I find that quite interesting. Yeah. No, and I, I, I think now, now is not so so much a, a problem because uh, uh, we are quite used to see the uh, uh, the artist work on uh, on the on online, um, especially with the. With the COVID, with the pandemic, now a lot of galleries uh, do a lot, a good business uh, with online, uh, uh, come on, uh, work. So it's, uh, uh, of course, I, I would, I would, yes. I would love to come in uh, Singapore to see your exhibition, but uh, uh, I think. And Olivier, we, 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 we are very happy to have you today uh, uh, virtually, and uh, we would certainly be so happy if you could come over. And yes, we can. Uh, we can sell artworks to collectors in France or elsewhere. We've uh, done it and we are very happy to do it. Uh, let me uh, also show you uh, something uh, very special uh, that uh, Jamie and Jamie have done for the gallery is uh, the shop window. 
So, you know, uh, Olivier, because you visited us a few years ago, uh, we are in a beautiful historical part of Singapore. You don't know the gallery, but you came next door to our home. Mm -hmm. And we, so here you see the view uh, towards uh, uh, some beautiful historical shop house. But what, what Jimmy and Jamie have done is they designed a sticker that's on the shop window and that uh, it's gradually uh, clearer when you go from uh, looking from inside from the right to the left. So you know, the left is completely transparent and while the right is uh, darker. Now it's broad daylight at the moment outside, so it's not so dark, but it, it creates a very different experience than usual for the, for the members of the public. And in fact, I want to maybe show you uh, some other things that Jamie and Jimmy have done. Maybe you want to guide us? A mission. Yes. So when we go to room two of the gallery, uh, we have to go behind the, the, the mirror door, which is, uh, I mean, if the door is closed, it's kind of a surprise. Maybe close the door, Jamie, then, we'll, uh, then we can open it. Uh, I'll stop for one second, my camera. All right, okay, you open. Okay. And yes, when we go to room two, a surprise, we, we see here this uh, neon sign. For those who know uh, Mark, it's handwritten by Mark. It was uh, Sean's idea. Sharing happiness with art, that's the mission of Art Porters. And we take a few steps down. And here you can see uh, Melvin. Melvin is a uh, artologist uh, with uh, Porters and he's also now manning the extra uh, phone. Uh, so, you know, Jamie and Jamie are really um, very well behaved uh, young people. They, they've been taught maybe by their parents that uh, you have to leave a place in a better shape that you found it. Yeah. So, uh, uh, they've done that with the gallery. Is we had this uh, dark blue uh, corridor between the two rooms and they have uh, intervened. Uh, by creating this uh, graduation of, uh, of blue, uh, which is uh, really, really uh, special. And that connects room one with, and for the first time ever, we have an exhibition that goes from uh, room one to uh, room two. You might have followed because uh, Melvin was showing you earlier on the, uh, on the other phone. So we have uh, two uh, works by Jimmy Theo, a few, uh, smaller works uh, by Jamie Tan. And here some uh, also lovely uh, sketches by Jamie uh, Theo. I mean, they're, they're, they're kind of sketches, but they're artworks on their own right. That's how she prepares uh, for the bigger works by testing the color range. And, and then she writes the, the name of the colors here. So do you guys use a color card? Uh, we don't use a color card. Actually, for me as a painter, uh, for my five years in school, I didn't really look at color uh, specifically till the last year of school. So basically, that's like my journey with color. So my entire, um, you can say like my artist journey, it sort of started because uh, when I was looking at color, it, it kind of like inspired me about uh, how it touches us consciously, we can consciously see them, and yet it also affects us unconsciously. So I kind of like this subject, it's very generous, so it can be very open, and yet it can be very private. So I kind of explore this area, where, and I'm kind of like interested in uh, the dimensions of color, and how can you create dimensions within color itself, Yeah. I think I didn't really use uh, color cards. It's more of what inspired me is things that I see around my environment. Some kind of weird color combinations that I see sometimes uh, in the streets or, or just what people wear. Yeah. So these kind of colors stay in my mind and I will try to recreate them in my paintings. So I'm also interested in what is like a color in the mind and the color that you try to mix up yourself. Because sometimes you have a kind of thought of the color that you want, but you just can't like, you can't mix it up to be like exact. Yeah, it can be quite different. Yeah. Like, 
what you think it might be, but when you mix it out, it can be quite different. Why? Because of what it uh, affecting it. So the surrounding, whether you're doing it in the daytime, you're doing it at night time, the color might look entirely different. Yeah. So do you discuss colors together? We do. We even do to our dear Melvin here. We have lots of conversation about color. Mm -hmm. We have very subjective views about color. And we have our own personal memory about color itself. Yeah, I mean, color yeah. itself is very subjective to everything, right? Like whatever that interacts with it. Everyone has different experiences. Everyone has different cultures and different kind of ideas of what color is. So it's something that's like, it seems very simple, but it's actually, there's a lot of mysteries you know, around it. Yeah, then we are talking about, you know, uh, we have a question just now over lunch. We say, can you even shape color? So, uh, we were talking about, okay, if you're going to close your eyes and I'm telling you there's a red apple on the table, what shape do you think it is? You know? Or shade. What shape? What shape? shape. The shape of color. What or the shape, or the shape of color. So, it kind of like, you know, trigger a lot of uh, different questions yeah. and the question leads to another question. So, I like, how color can go through different stages of thinking conceptually and also physically. You know, when you mentioned this idea of shape of color, at first I thought maybe you meant shade, but then you reminded me of this uh, beautiful title by Magritte. Uh, he had this painting that's called La Terre est bleue comme une orange. The earth <laughs> is blue like an orange. Ooh. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. because it's the yeah. idea, the orange is this almost perfect sphere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the earth is blue like an orange. It's so beautiful. And, and yeah. it, you know, we get this idea of, uh, of shape. Right. Um, yeah. Then I was, I was telling them uh, how I felt that black and green color, black green color was something very poisonous. Yes. Because, because we always think of the cartoon, yes. they always have this uh, cauldrons like wizard, they use this potion, they start dripping with like slime, colorful slime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah, so we have different like, different memories and ideas about color based on what you watch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, so you can ask the same question, you can ask Olivier. Like what what how how do you choose like colors for seasons? Like we always say like fall winter is like cooler shades and spring summer is always like very bright greens and florals. Um I, 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 think, I, I think there is a different uh, approach when we do the color scarf. Uh, of course, the color cards of uh, comment, uh, um, Comité Français de la Couleur Intercolor are uh, a connection with different color cards of different people of different countries. And after we try to do in synthesis, synthesis. But uh, personally, when I work of the, uh, on the colors, um, I have different uh, approach. The, the first one is really. Uh, uh, instinctive. Um, my 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 feeling, what I have in the in the mind, in the spirit, it means something very very creative uh, with the emotion. Uh, the, uh, the the second point, of course, is uh, more. Uh, uh, comment, um, the those points are more practical uh, because. Uh, uh, there is a, a rhythm in the in the color. So when you work since uh, quite a long time on the color cards, uh, when you see uh, color uh, some, some type of color too 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 too, too much, you, you have you want to renew and to find a new way. Uh, so sometimes it can be new colors, but we can say that all the colors exist. But uh, also it's. Uh, um, the storytelling and the, uh, the association, the harmony, uh, we can uh, reinvent the, the, the colors. 
because th there is uh, uh, micro teams. So it can be one season uh, like uh, uh, mauve or purple, but also there is a, a macro theme. For instance, uh, the green, uh, the green, which was a color not very popular in the 1780s until 90s, uh, with all the green uh, movement all over the world with the ecology becoming something is becoming something very important and you can be sure that uh, each season you will find green but new green with different approach so the, there is different uh, position and after you choose also the color when you when you do the colors um, we are not artists so we, we do the colors for the for the fashion for the industry uh, for the cars so you, you have to think about the use of the color. So it's a mix between subjective and uh, uh, objective uh, point of view. In that way, we work on the, on the colors. Is it clear? Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's not only clear, it's uh, beautifully, uh, beautifully colored. Um, Okay, let me just switch the camera back again. More interesting people. Uh, so uh, there was a question in the chat uh, by, by someone who was asking uh, about the medium. You know, people tend to think you're using spray. So uh, let me reinforce that you're both using oil and a brush. No, using oil and brush. Um, yeah, so in, in, your, in your case, Jamie, do you want yeah. to sh tell us how you do the lines? Oh, okay, if you look at the lines I'm doing from, uh, I do it in quite immediately. So basically I don't wait till one line is dry and then I continue. So I usually start from the middle and then I go from one to, to the outside. So actually if you can look at the line, uh, from the inside is actually, I did it freehand. So you can see some of the lines are a bit wavy. But because our perception, if you move back further, the lines automatically become straight. So I guess that's, one of the powerful aspects of color. And I'm interested in this gradation because for me, it's very simple, but yet it speaks about a lot of depth. So I think that's the part where I talk about how color touches us consciously and then unconsciously we felt that depth. Yeah. So One of our fans, uh, Alexandra, just put in the chat freehand, wow. Yes. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah. I mean, yes. So actually that is the question because some people would think if you use spray and scotch tape, yeah. that technically the work would be easy to do. Would well, it actually, would it be easy to do and would it be the same? Actually. And why, and why bother? Okay. If you use tape, you also need some skill on how to use a tape because sometimes you will take the color off. So it's basically like cooking. You need to know when you can put the tape or when you cannot put the tape at all. So I need to master both. Yeah. And how about symmetry? Because I know we had uh, some uh, of our friends who are very uh, who looked at detail very carefully. And for example, who saw that. Uh, so here you see this darker orange line, just aligns with this pale blue here, and above this yellow, uh, uh, on, on, on this side is the same, but on that side aligns with a green band. So it's not entirely symmetrical. Uh, yeah, no, for me, this is a playful element that I add to my paintings. So it's kind of like a road, it's kind of like a route for you to travel. So I would call them this, I would like to call them like rest stops. You can see the gradations. But these are these colors at the sides are the one that influence the gradation itself. So for me, it's a small interesting, uh, interesting feeling about paintings. Yeah, and you can see that they are not entirely symmetrical. Some of the lines over here, here and here, they are of different sizes actually. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now, Jimmy, you sure you don't use spray? Brush. Brush only. So why don't you make your life easy and use spray? 
I think even with spraying, it requires a lot of technique. It's not easy to, to control spray. I've never tried it myself, but I don't think it would be very easy to kind of create such an effect. Yeah. So I think with brush, uh, for me, it's easier to control with a brush because it's very direct. And I can also kind of shift it around. Like, but with something with like spray, it becomes very direct. Right. Once you spray, it's there and you can't really erase it away. But with a brush, you can kind of push it, you know, mask it and layer over and over. So that's kind of like the fun part that I like about using brush and oil. So earlier you, you told me that you were having conversations with co uh, about color with Melvin. So Melvin, mm -hmm. you're, you've now been with his artworks for uh, almost a month in the gallery. Do you have uh, insights you want to share or questions for Jamie and Jamie? Right. So actually, yeah, I discussed a lot with, with them. And uh, yeah, so I think we've been sharing quite a lot of ideas yeah, about color. And we even talk about how color relates itself to food. Or can we even taste color? Oh, wow. Yeah. So we're talking about how we have this drink called the Fanta grape. And it, it's telling you that it's a grape soda drink. But actually, it doesn't really taste like grape. But it's a purple in color. So basically, we are like drinking a purple drink. Like we don't know what that is. Yeah. So that's kind of like interesting. Yeah, so, so building upon Jamie Tan's point of how, uh, let's say, lime green, for Jamie Gyo, she it reminds her of something sour, like uh, the actual fruit, which is lime green. But for Jamie Tan, he is reminded of something very poisonous, very toxic. So probably they are uh, from yeah, pop culture, um, like cartoons that we watch, they often portray like a cauldrons of a poison and it's depicted in green color. Yeah, so probably that's how individuals get their association to color. And this is what we call a subjective uh, way of seeing colors yeah. as opposed to objective. Thank you. And J Jamie, uh, we had um, one of our friends on the chat complimenting uh, your um, amazing uh, textures. And you clearly have uh, this self-control of the, of the brush, and, uh, uh, but you use it in terms of creating texture because half your paintings are flat, yeah. super flat. Uh, that's the word I can tell. But, uh, and half have this texture. And so w why not have texture all the time? Or why not be flat all the time? I think for, uh, I, I always want to kind of create these two series of works where one is completely flat and the other are the ones with the texture. So it's also the difference of the attention that one takes to look at these kind of works. So if you look at like the works that are flat and just with a gradient, it, it's very direct. So it, maybe you take like a few seconds to just kind of like absorb it. But with the works with texture, I feel that people will kind of like take more time to notice like all the direction of the work. So the brush, the brush strokes kind of like show a way of like where I start and where I begin. Where for work like this, it's kind of like a mystery of like where does it end or where does it begin, yeah. Okay, in the meantime, I've been so shocked. I've just seen Olivier Guillemin smoke. Wow. <laughs> what did I dream? <laughs> no, he was smoking just now, bad boy. And but that does, <laughs> isn't that going to affect your perception of color, Olivier? No, 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 no. No, it might, no? <laughs> it might because you know Jamie is telling you all about the equation between color and taste. So yeah, um, it might, you know. Yes. I mean, I was a smoker once, and I've quit smoking, so I changed quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, it kind of changes quite a bit. Yeah. Um, yes, I see. Uh, Alexandra, you have a you have a you have a question for Jamie. You want to, you want to unmute yourself? No, Jamie. As you know, I'm a big fan. Where when she was at UNB, I'd come every Monday morning before the Monday morning lecture and just stand there. <laughs> uh, I have a question, Jamie. The, the green and yellow one. You put the movements on the side, whereas the 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 big purple one. Uh, upstairs it looks, and you had some at the UOB Plaza in green and yellow, look more like mountains. The way, the, this one, the way uh, 
you cut the color, the purple, the green. For me, it, remember, it reminds me a bit of the Shan Shui, the, the water, mountain uh, water like Chinese landscapes. Mm -hmm. And in the green and yellow one, you suddenly push the color onto the side, uh, which is a new movement from what I've seen from your work. Yes. So yeah, actually this was the piece where I wanted to try something different. So I'm thinking like, how, how can I kind of play with this movement, right? I always want to kind of defeat movement in my works. So instead of um, my previous works, I always push them to the edge. So for this, I was like, why not like just make like a really long, like kind of cut between the green and the yeah. So it's like, in a way, it's kind of like this part that just kind of pushes down. And then it kind of blends together at the bottom. Yeah, I'm just kind of playing with like the different kind of compositions that you can have. Yeah. And you can play around with all the textures. Uh, the, the purple one is good and blue is beautiful as well. The, the, the bigger one in Guillaume is showing us. Uh, and she's, uh, it's, it's, it's Melvin who's showing. I'm, I'm holding the phone so showing Jimmy and Jimmy there. Uh, yes. Right okay, sorry. So, so um, now we're, we're approaching the end of the, uh, of the, of, of the hour. And um, I don't know who would like to have a word of conclusion. Um, um, J Jimmy and Jimmy, do you, you have, do, or do you have, a, do you have, do you have a question for Olivier? Oh, I wanted to ask about like, what do you feel about like Pantone colors of the year? Like, like the Pantone mm -hmm. color for this year was classic blue, right? So who kind of predicts like what's going to be the color for next year? That's why I, 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 didn't I, I didn't understand very well the question with the echo. Yeah, yeah let, me, let, me, let me tell you. Uh, so, so Jamie Chio was asking, uh, you know, Pantone chooses a color of the year and this year it's classic blue. Uh, so how is it selected? Yeah, and, it, why is and why must why why and why must it be selected? Oh yeah, and yes, and what, yeah, what, why do we need to have a color of the year like that? And uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, you know Pantone exists since uh, a, a long time, and uh, during uh, during a long time, it was only a, a color um, a reference for a professional. Uh, uh, for designer, for professional, to have uh, uh, so you can work uh, at distance uh, with the colors uh, to to give the colors. But uh, since uh, uh, almost ten years, Pantone uh, uh, became a, a brand, and they try to develop also uh, uh, item furniture. And uh, the story of color of the year is more uh, for me uh, marketing approach. It's for the communication. Uh, because uh, with that, they can communicate in the press uh, to tell that uh, this is the color of the year. But uh, we, we, do, we, we, do, we, we did that uh, in the French Committee of Color. Each season, uh, um, recently, we make uh, each season a uh, color focus, which was a color uh, uh, not of the year, but the color which will be important in two years. So it was different, and it was not for... Uh, um, marketing because uh, we didn't sell our color cards and it's uh, only reserved to the member of the French Committee of Colors and to the members of um, uh, Intercolor. And after, of, of course, uh, the colors, uh, our colors are used in different uh, uh, concertation for uh, big fair in fashion, like uh, in textile, like uh, Première Vision or uh, uh, in design. Uh, so, um, I think Pantone, it's, uh, um, the, the color of the year is um, really a marketing uh, uh, communication approach. So they choose one color, which is not f exactly for me the color of the year. Because actually, uh, the, the, the color uh, uh, paysage, uh, totally changed in, uh, during, uh, since the 70s, 80s, uh, where it was uh, very easy to, to, to tell that uh, there is one color, but now uh, there is so different uh, uh, aspect in uh, fashion, in design, in cosmetic, that you cannot, you cannot have one color. It's uh, really depends of your target, of your uh, uh, 
uh, of your market, uh, of the use that you will do. And uh, also the colors, it's totally linked now with the volume, with the shape, with the material, the color, the link with the color and the material is very uh, important. And I was particularly interesting uh, with this uh, uh, to, 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 to see more clearly your work because during the presentation, uh, uh, we, see, we see very well the, 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 the texture uh, of the, and it's really beautiful. It's not uh, flat, it's, uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's in 3D. It can be flat, but it looks like in 3D in the two approach of the two uh, artists. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Olivier. Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy, do you have a color of the year? Is there one of the colors in the exhibition that is your color? Uh, for me, this year was red. Which red? Like that red. Oh, that. Well, there's an infinity of reds here, no? Yeah. Somebody uh, was telling me uh, the other day in the gallery that it looks like windows with the sun setting. For me, it looks like a bonfire, like, you know, you're looking at a window with fire, like, it's just this sense of warmth in them, yeah. So which, which red you want to point? Uh, this way. So for me, it looks like fire, it's fire burning. So I kind of really like this red a lot. Oh, so that's the Jimmy Teo red you're choosing? Yeah, it's a Jimmy Teo red. And Jimmy Teo, which color are you choosing? I think for this show especially, I was kind of very interested in purples. Purple. So that's why you can kind of see there's quite a few pieces with purples and mm. kind of like playing with um, the red tones and the bluer tones of purple. Yeah. So we have one physical member of the public who's been following uh, the exhibition very well and uh, following the, 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 the talk. Do, do, do you have a question? Do you have a favorite color you want to share? Or do you have a comment to, for posterity? Uh, not a favorite color, but I really enjoy uh, Olivier's discussion about you know, how the different style and painting brought back so many of the creativity in the industry. You know, and how uh, the different parts of the world you know, also have a certain perspective of how the colors have been used. So that's a very, very good coverage. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you, Cheng Sam. I have one question for Olivia. Uh, what is your advice for people who want to understand the importance of color? For example, like the color community focuses on color, but I believe there are people out there who are thinking like, why are we looking at color? Like, why? your advice to even start for someone like for someone new who wants to study the object of color itself yeah yeah i think uh, maybe you know, not so many too many people yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's frozen. Oh, Olivier, you're frozen, is it? Oh, okay. Ah, okay. So, uh, J J J J J Jimmy Tan was just uh, asking you what's your advice for people who ask about... Who wants to know more about the subject of color and why even bother about, you know, uh, understand about this whole color thing. Yeah. What is your advice for some of them? Ouais. Ton, ton conseil pour quelqu'un qui, qui demande pourquoi la couleur? Ah. Yes. Pourquoi la couleur? In general. My color. In general. Yeah, in general, why? Why, 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 why bother? bother? Why bother taking color? Because, because, because oh, there is many... Uh, um, I can give, there is many answers. First of all, because uh, uh, the colors uh, uh, bring uh, happiness uh, in, the, in the world. Uh, the color also, it's, uh, it's, um, it's a dimension. Uh, we always 
talk about the three dimension, but for me, the colors is a fourth dimension. It will change the, uh, the, 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 the meaning, it will change, uh, it will change the, the, the volume, it will change the, uh, the deepness of something. Uh, we, we, we see that very well in the work of the two artists. And uh, uh, for me, the color uh, also, it's something uh, uh, which bring emotional uh, feeling. Um, so uh, it's so important. Uh, I don't know if it's clear my answer. I can give you more different answer, but for, for me, the colors, it's something necessary in, the, in our world. The color is everywhere. And uh, during a long time, for instance, in, uh, in uh, design, uh, uh, in architecture, the people didn't use the color because it was uh, the last things uh, the architect didn't take in, in feeling of course, some exception like uh, Le Corbusier, but uh, in the main architecture, the color was considered like something uh, um, not essential, something uh, um, anecdotic. And uh, in many in many cases, for instance, uh, uh, the color was uh, when uh, architect uh, do a building. Uh, when the building is almost finished, uh, they, they they look uh, what budget we have for the colors, and uh, um, usually they have no more budget for the colors, so they don't use uh, interesting color. It changed a little bit now. I think uh, the the new architect. Uh, 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 have a different uh, view and uh, uh, they include uh, also the colors in the in the origin of the, the creation thank you olivier well i have to thank everybody for their time i have to thank the members of the public we would have sent in the chat some really uh, sweet comments appreciating the exhibition appreciating uh, olivier's presentation it's uh, it's been wonderful and colorful to uh, receive you in the gallery, Olivier. Thank you for bringing the Comité Français de la Couleur to Singapore, uh, to Singapore, and Intercolor and uh, OO as well. Um, we uh, really want to uh, to thank you and thank you, of course, Jimmy and Jamie for your participation uh, today. Yes, and thank you to invite to invite me in Singapore. Waiting yes. <laughs> go physically yes. very soon. Come soon. Come soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. So bye-bye. Bye-bye.